Hey, about a month ago, I grabbed a bite to eat with a really cool person I met on TikTok. We went to Vegan on the Fly, which is one of my favorite fast casual places to eat in the city. They do like vegan halal food, and my favorite thing to get there is the Impossible Platter. But they also do really good milkshakes and like sandwiches, stuff like that. You should definitely check them out. Anyway, a bunch of things went wrong during recording because I haven't done an interview style video in a minute, including my guest's mic didn't turn on, and I almost didn't publish. However, I felt like we had some good conversation and also, this can also serve as a benchmark for my interview videos going forward. And hopefully I can have the guests back on in a couple years when they're more established and I have a lot more experience doing this. That's all for disclaimers. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, so I'm here at Vegan on the Fly with Jerry and you'll get to know a lot more about them later. But as most of you know, Vegan on the Fly is my favorite vegan halal spot. Actually, it's the only vegan halal spot in New York City, but it is also my favorite. Uh, I wanted to get down and hang out with another like New York City based creator, get to know them a little bit better. I found them on TikTok and we don't remember who found who first. I have a impossible platter here and a chicken one. Which one did you want? Uh, chicken. You do lots of things creatively. I've looked oh. that up. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> Listen, I don't do many interviews, so I have to okay. do my homework, make sure I'm yeah, not yeah. like completely messing up. Okay. I host a satirical news show about stuff happening in New York City. On top of that, I also have a podcast for um, Asian American politics. Um, and then on top of that, I also have a day job. Nice. What's your day job? I work in tech. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> is it, is I always tell people my career dream is to no longer have to worry about LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's the dream. I run my dad's LinkedIn. Oh, nice. Yes, I have one, but okay. I haven't logged in since I graduated high school. The dream. Yeah. <laughs> I literally run my dad's LinkedIn. Oh. Um, he has 14,000 followers. Oh my I god! I know, I know. He's so proud of that. Okay, between you and me, okay. he thinks views are likes. No. So he'll get like a thousand views and he'll be like, Rebecca, I got a thousand likes on LinkedIn. Yes, that's so <laughs> And I will not correct him. Hey, engagement is engagement. I know, right? And. It's kind of like me being involved with LinkedIn without actually being involved with yeah, LinkedIn yeah. because I hate LinkedIn so much. That's fair. Why not? Want to try the food? Yes, please. Yes. This looks really good. A little food break. This is not chicken, right? Like, You're vegan. Are you vegan? I am not actually. And <laughs> I am famously like, if people who know me watch this, they'll be stunned because I'm famously known for not eating vegetables. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I have to say, like, vegan meat isn't exactly a vegetable. It was a vegetable at one right. point. Yeah. No, but it's really good. Awesome. I feel like we've come so far in, like, vegan food, though. Like, stuff like this, I would I would have never known that this wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, if I don't think about it too hard, I would have never known this wasn't not It wasn't made. secretly a vegetable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were you born in New York? I was not. Okay. Um, I was not. I was born in Jersey. Um, okay. But, I mean, New York adjacent. New York adjacent. We do shit on New Jersey a little bit, but to be honest, it is New York adjacent. Um, but I grew up in Alabama. Really? Mm -hmm. New York was the place I gave my parents like the opportunity to immigrate here. Mm -hmm. um, my, my dad. Too. Yeah, my dad worked mm -hmm. in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And um, and then because of their visas, they got sent to Alabama, and I spent like 20 plus years there. And uh, I came here for grad school. Nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, this just gets interesting. Okay, so how long have you lived here now again? Six, six going on. Six okay, years. a decent amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not okay. one of those pandemic not transplants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask you, like, one of my little notes and my questions was, ask someone who's from New York because I thought you were, which is a compliment, right? Thank how do you. How do you feel about people not from New York giving commentary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm still on the. Yeah. How do you navigate giving commentary in places where you might be missing a little context due to like maybe not growing up here? That's something I really... Wait, pause. They don't know what the Pigeon Post is. Oh. Wait, rewind. Can you please explain the Pigeon Post? Yeah, so the Pigeon Post is a satirical news show um, about what's happening in New York. Why do you call it a satirical news show? Because it's low-key on the money most of the time. When I think satirical, I think onion. Mm -hmm. And you're not the onion. Mm, okay. It's more of like the Daily Show slash Last Week Tonight mm -hmm. um, angle. People like John Oliver and John Stewart, they always have this saying like, oh, we're not journalists, we're comedians. Mm -hmm. We're comedians first. And I always want to follow that. I do want to, you know, make sure my facts are straight. Yeah. But 
my first goal is to always just be try to be funny. Okay. Um, I always like get my news from news outlets. Like, yeah. Those are the real journalists. Those are the ones doing the hard work. Yeah. You're calling it satirical news because you're delivering like your info in maybe like a lighthearted way or an interesting twist mm -hmm. or like everyone below the age of 35 is on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like those that's like the biggest bulk of like people coming into New York. Yeah. And I feel like if people our age um, knew what was happening in the city, like they, you know, they feel a little bit more engaged with it. Yeah. News-wise, I've been watching one person for easily since 2008. Oh wow. That does okay. the news, right? You probably heard of Philip DeFranco. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Philip DeFranco has been my news source <laughs> since 2008 <laughs> because I want to stay in touch with everything, but I do find the news depressing generally. Yeah, that's fair. And I'm like, I'm sensitive. Like I will, I, I will cry. Like when I see sad news, like I can't just be like, oh yeah, that's sad. I'll just be crying. And my friend's like, you have to stop watching that shit. Mm. I'm like I know, but yeah. I also don't want to detach myself from what's going on because that feels stupid. Like I'm living <laughs> in this world. I want to yeah. know what's going on. I want to be in touch with what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm voting. So in order to vote, I have to feel, I have to be in touch with what's happening. Oh, of course. To a certain degree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't just like shut everything off. So I feel like these shorter news things give me a sample of what's going on without me doom scrolling too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, in Pigeon and then in the uh, Asian American podcast that I do, um, we always try, or I always try to strive for uh ending or like adding a, a like action item mm -hmm. like um, a way that like oh you know you can get involved by like volunteering with this or, or like bringing food to your food you know local food fridge or something like that mm -hmm. um, I mean yeah on a grand scale you know you're just one person but there's something like at least uh, cathartic about being able to do something you know yeah. what I mean and also like every action starts with a bunch of one people's yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 that's true. That's very true. I feel like it's really important to have an action, a call to action, right? At yeah. the end of like maybe even an upsetting story or something like difficult because if you just deliver the news, people don't really know what to do about it. Again, like you start getting, mm -hmm. feel helpless. And once you start feeling helpless, people stop caring at all. And then you, yeah, they sort of shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 So. Okay, so back to the question is how do you navigate Doing New York City commentary as a half New Yorker. Uh, half New Yorker. I don't want to call you a non-New Yorker. I'll, I'll take it. I'll I take feel it. like you have some legitis legitimacy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've cried on a train. I've had a bird shit on me. Oh, um, yeah, that's it. I've also had know? a bird shit on me. Yeah, it went my eye. Oh, you win. Yeah. So. You win. I feel like, you know, that was it. I was like, this is it. That's pretty bad. Yeah, or, pretty or bad. good. They say it's good luck. I think that's something people say to, like, try to make themselves feel better Completely. about. Completely. But... You could try. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, so how do I uh, make commentary on New York without, you know, sounding... Like, do you do, like, research to see... Okay, let's just say something weird happens. Do you do research to make sure it might not be a cultural thing before shitting on it? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I fortunately have been here for at least six years. Um, and it's a principle in comedy in general where you always want to, like, punch up, yeah. not punch down. Totally. Um, and I feel like as long as I'm doing that, I, I can't really go yeah. wrong. Um, I mean, yeah. you fooled me. Like, I, I I thought they were from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, like, such a high compliment. Like, I, I will get... You're not the only New Yorker who has, like, told me that. And yeah. I, I just, like, I have to, like, write my diaries, like, got another one. Like, I got them, boys. Check. Yeah, like, it's... it's I mean, like, I feel like, and you can tell me how you feel, but I feel like transplant is almost like an insult. It is. It is, right? And and the funny thing is, like, whenever people stop me for things, or like, back in the day when they stopped me to hand a CD, I would get insulted. I'd be like, you think I'm not from here? Yeah. I, like, I almost wanted to be like, okay, what about me makes you think I'm not from here because I'll change it right away. Right, right. <laughs> I feel like you can move to New York City, obviously, your example. You can move to New York City and like truly add to it and like live in it, mm -hmm. like not in the stereotypical like uh, transplanty influencer type of way, right? Yeah. And I don't know a lot about your life just from what you posted online. Okay. Um, but you seem to have like involved yourself with the community and like taken from it but also added to it. And like that's why it feels like you're from here. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's kind of the way to do it, you know? Yeah, I, I am uh, glad that new transplants coming in have this opportunity to come to the city. And I think what makes me sad, and I hope what can change, mm -hmm. um, what I try to do with Pigeon, is like, it's more than just like, you know, pop-ups and like the sample sale and like stuff that you can put on social media. It's also like about, uh, you know, New York is like, Google walkable cities in, in the United States, and like, who else are you gonna find? It's, the thing I love the most about New York City, I lived in California for nine months one time. Um, I'm and sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you don't even know. I lived in upstate California, oh. in Humboldt County. Have you heard of Humboldt County? No, what is that? Humboldt County is where all the weed for the U.S. has been grown for the past couple decades, right? Oh, wow. So okay. it's a very interesting um, place to live because almost nobody who actually lives there lives there. The, the main population are trimmers, so the city or towns around like the weed growing fields, whatever they're called, um, they're very overrun with people for like three, four months out of the year where it's okay. trimming season. And then the rest of the year it's a ghost town. Oh. Um, it's a very weird place to live. I lived there for nine months. Okay. Wait, wait, so you lived in the ghost town? Yes. When it was a ghost town? I, I wasn't a trimmer. I yeah. was I just living there as a regular civilian. Not knowing any of this before I moved there, by the way. Oh wow! It's a long story. I accidentally fell into a cult. Okay, wow. Yeah, it's a it's a long story again. But <laughs> going trying to go back on track. Um, when I first moved back here after nine months being away, I have a very distinct memory of being in the subway and feeling so free because I didn't have a car back there. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. I was getting rides from my friends, like, I didn't have a car, so I felt so limited to, like, the three blocks around me, um, and then when I was here, and listen, we shit on the subway, it's disgusting. It's, it's, it's okay to dunk on the sub, or it's, it's not okay to dunk on the subway, <laughs> but, like, you can dunk on the MTA, like, that's, those are my rules. MTA does some dumb shit, but the accessibility the subway gives people to everything New York City has to offer is, like, you don't understand unless you've not lived here. So I have a very distinct memory of being in the subway and just seeing all these strangers around me that I would normally not even look at, right? Yeah. I would just be like kind of sitting on my phone. And I was just like, <sighs> like I was just so happy. <laughs> when you to, got back. Yeah, yeah, to be amongst everybody, mm -hmm. to be, I felt so free. Like, I don't know how to describe that. Like maybe it's like the first day you ever get your driver's license and you feel like you can go anywhere. That's ironic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I felt so free. It, it was like learning to walk. Like. Being limited here, and then now, whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, I love it. I love New York City for that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I always tell my partner, like, I never want to touch a car, like, or at least, like, a, a wheel ever yeah. again. Um, I, I just don't want to deal with a car. I, yeah. I love public transit. Have you seen the viral video of the cat peeing in the bodega? <laughs> just peed. I just saw that. Um, my bodega doesn't look like that, first off. Like, it does not have that many, like, fresh veggies yes. just hanging out. You know who does, though, is, like, the Mr. Pinas, yes, the Mr. Yes, that's, that's true. Mr. I think mine's, yeah, Mr. Kiwi. Okay, and when I, I saw that video, it was someone sending it to me, um, being like, is this your, like, Mr. Pina, right? Because, like, it's okay, I'm moving in, like, a month. But, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Because I live next to Miss Pina, is this Mr. Pina? And I have to look really hard, right? But no, I think Mr. Pina carries like slightly different produce. Okay. You know. Okay. So my question to you is, are you deterred from buying uh, produce at any place that has a cat now? Because, you know, the possibility of cat fur, cat paws, whatever, you know, whatever. It, it just didn't care. Um, but cat pee is a little bit gross. That's really hard. Um, I almost. It, it, it's almost like a neutral, still 50-50 for me. Like, yeah. I had to really, like, want the vegetable or Would fruit. you just sniff it? Oh, I forgot, you don't even like vegetables. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'll eat fruit, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, like, I mean, they get they, a lot of people get cat, uh, bodega cats to, like, get rid of mice. The mice. Yeah, that's the whole point of them. Right. Yeah, so and they're like, cute. I mean, the mice could be pooping on your veggies, right? If, if I don't see a cat. For some reason, cat pee is grosser than mouse poop on a vegetable. It, yeah, I think it's about the liquid aspect. Yeah, it's it? a liquid. It's very spreadable. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would also have to assess the veggie. Mm -hmm. oh, what about you? 
<sighs> After seeing that, I do not think I'm deterred. Okay. But I will inspect way more. Okay. I mean, that's pretty gross, but I have to be say, like, I've lived here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Never once have I seen a cat even walking on the vegetables. Yeah, that was the you first time I mean? I've ever seen that. Yeah, like, usually they live on the floor, you know what I mean? <laughs> usually they're not even in the store. I haven't yeah. seen the bodega cat outside on the yeah. sidewalk. The one, the one next to my apartment specifically, um, the cat does kind of hang out inside, yeah. but I've never seen them even touch the produce. So, yeah. I gotta be honest, I think it's an outlier. I think we're yeah. safe. But I will double check now, just because I've seen that. <laughs> also, everyone's tagging me in it because of my username. <laughs> oh yeah! Yeah, I'm yeah. literally getting tags. This you, this you, I mean, and then is it? Listen, the okay. people need to know. <laughs> I did address it on my TikTok this morning. Okay. And I denied all allegations. So okay, I expect the slander to stop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> A non-New York related question, but more of like an advice question. Okay. How do you have the confidence to give your opinion online? Because I. Do not. When it comes to food, I do, okay. right? Obviously, I, so my whole platform is telling people that food is good, but I'm always nervous to give my opinion on anything like actually important. Because hey, food is important. It is. Okay, growing up, a little bit of a people pleaser, right? Okay. So, when someone's mad at me, I used to shut down. And it does not even matter if that anger was legit. Yeah, it, like, I, I could, that. I could know they're wrong, and I would still be so upset that someone's mm. mad at me. I even used to know someone who I didn't like, right? Yeah. But the fact that they didn't like me bothered me. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> I get that, I get that. And, and I still feel like that now. Yeah. So, like... So, how do you... And I'm better now in terms of, like, people pleasing. Like, miles better. The past three years, I feel like I've matured a lot in that aspect. But I feel like all the times I've given my opinion online, as soon as I got two or three people angry at me, delete TikTok. <laughs> like, I, delete the t I, I deleted a TikTok two days ago. How do you be okay with people mad at you online? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, number one, getting the confidence. Uh, I feel like the question itself, you, you kind of just get confidence, right? Like, yeah. if you know people are always going to be mad at you, then you can, you can just do it. I feel like you could post the most, like, nuanced, you know, like, oh, but we have to consider this, and like, I know some people go through this, but that doesn't mean, you know, like, you can do that. First off, it doesn't make for a great video if you just, you know, like... I know! If, a if you, clear like, cut, stating your opinion makes for a much better video. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is weird that, to consider, like, oh, that's not good for engagement, but... Yeah. Um, so, when you know that, you know, you there's always someone who's gonna, like... Be upset. Be upset. Yeah. I mean then I, I just, I don't know, like that that in itself is like, you know, there's always gonna be that person there, just I'm looking for the 10 who are gonna say it, or like even just the one who's like, wow, that was a really great point, I learned mm -hmm. something, you know, whatever. Um, the second thing I learned is, um, I forgot who said this, maybe this was like a speech and debate thing, um, but, uh, oh, you know what it is? It's just from like years of like <laughs> arguing online. <laughs> um, a tactic I've seen someone do, uh, I can't remember where I learned it from, someone was like, what would it, like, just asking people, what would it take for you to change your mind? And if, like, people can't answer that question, or, like, they're not arguing in good faith, then you know you yeah. don't really have to, you know, you, you know that they're just typing it out to type yeah, it. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth it for you to even engage. Yeah. 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 I, I do sometimes, sometimes I'm, like, point blank. If someone, because I post vegan food, but... I don't feel I don't post argumentative vegan points, right? I just literally just post food, <laughs> pretty G-rated. Like, yeah, people still somehow get angry at me. By the way, um, people can get mad at anything on TikTok. One hundred percent, anything. Um, but sometimes when someone asks something simple, like, "Why do you make your food look like meat if you hate meat?" Ninety, I know for over the years, I know 95% of the time, it's that person just trying to argue. Mm -hmm. But 5%, they it's a real question, right? Yeah. So I will literally reply and be like, is this a real question? Are you trying to be mean? <laughs> Wait, that's so good. Yeah. That's so good. Because a lot of the times, if they're trying to be mean, they'll just come at you again with another meaner question. Yeah. And then I'll just delete them, whatever. But if they're like, no, I really want to know, sometimes it's worth taking the time to educate, right? Mm -hmm. And Again, one, as soon as I realize you're arguing in bad faith, I'll just delete it. Like, because, 
again, I, I can't argue with someone. Yeah. I get very anxious, but I'm okay with chatting. Like I love talking. Obviously, we've been talking for like 40 minutes or whatever. The piling of people angry, it still, it still messes yeah. with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's a good practice for yourself. Yeah. Like I think that's a great. Like, are you? Do I you really want to know. I asked. Do you really want to know? That's so good. <laughs> Sometimes I will. If someone asks like a question, I'm just like, this sounds mean. I'm not even gonna deal with it. Delete and block. Yeah. I made a video about the Natural History Museum. And, yes. Like, their Asian it was very cool. Way. Yeah. Well. The exhibit wasn't <laughs> cool, but I liked the video. <laughs> yeah, and um, there was like someone who wrote like a dissertation in the comments, which I always think like, you know what? Prop. It was like ten, literally like wow. ten, a, a comment and then like threaded. I've, yeah, nine. I've gotten. Yeah, and I'm just like those people. I kind of feel like I, you definitely have to block because um, you know just based on how the algorithm works, they'll bring in more people who think like them yeah. and will be mean to you. Yeah. You know, I posted that video like last week. This week. This kind of a while ago, and I'm still thinking about some of the comments. Yeah, that were, like said, like so. thinking, like questioning if you were right, or thinking like, oh, that was mean. Yeah, oh, that was mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say I don't have to worry about being like wrong or anything, but you know, it was a satirical video yeah, about yeah. like, oh, I love how bad this exhibit. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. It's not. You know, is is not. I think that's a, an advantage of like doing at least like comedic. Yeah. Com uh, content that like I don't really have to care that deeply about yeah you know like that kind of thing why the pigeon post by the way why the pigeon post yeah um the okay name. I I was gonna name it New York minute I gotta be honest okay because I was like oh the videos on TikTok are less than a minute cute um and then I saw that someone already had that name <laughs> and I was like okay so this isn't as original as I yeah. thought um, and unfortunately, I have grown attached to pigeons. Um, you know what? Not unfortunately. I like pigeons. On the way over here, I was like watching a pigeon like walk, and I was just like, you know what? Honestly, like I feel like pigeons are the most New Yorker bird. Like I get there are pigeons 100%. in every other city, but yeah. like I just feel like it's it's like the most New Yorker bird. You know, I just thought it was funny, and then just add post to it. But the pigeon post, like that was like a real thing, like. Pigeons used to carry like news yeah, and shit that like too. that, so it works. Messenger pigeons. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought that was fun. I think it's a great username. I thank you. When I was making my username, I, I was not making it for like social media or related purposes. It yeah. was just like my regular normal username right okay um i didn't make it with the thought of doing food blogging or anything yeah. um i wanted to name it after a new york city animal yeah. so my things were bodega cat pigeon and rat yeah right of course so those are like the three <laughs> to pick from and I, I don't know why i ended up with bodega cat um i, I just did it's the most socially acceptable i think of it the three. is so i think that's everything for now uh welcome to my first little interview on this channel in a long first. time okay yeah i used to do them a little bit like a while back but yeah. i'm bringing them back because oh, i'm honored yeah I'm honored thank, thank you. you yeah thanks for agreeing to be on my show oh, yeah. i mean that sincerely yeah like this course. is our first time meeting by yeah. the way it's literally luck that we seem to have clicked pretty well in terms of like banter and conversation imagine if it was awkward that'd be so bad <laughs> oh and i'm glad you like the food yeah, it's really um, good. i'll put all of Jerry's links down below. Definitely go check them out, especially on TikTok. That's where I found them. I think they're pretty cool on there. Um, but they also have an Instagram and podcast. Do you do YouTube at all? I do not, but I should, but I don't. You should at the very minimum just like put your stuff on YouTube as shorts because it's very little extra work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I gotta get around to doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for being on here. Again, links are down below. And stay tuned for next time. If you have anyone you think that should be on this show, any New York City based creators, then please let me know and I'll try to get in contact with them. Bye! <laughs> Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Lucia, Alex Creates, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, Planet Earth, Jenny, Gemini, Janine, Stacey, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Abigail, Dana, Vanessa, Nakia, Matt, Mariana, Andrew, McKenna, Shanta, Adrian, Dawn, Susan, Trudy, Clark, and Sarah. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content. I also have a TikTok and an Instagram if you want to check me out there and merch. Always down in the description. See ya!